Hello, I'm Glenn Darling from the Open Horizon team, and I'd like to talk to you about how patterns and policies are used in Open Horizon. Open Horizon agents manage the applications on their nodes, and those nodes can either be standalone Linux machines using Docker or clusters of machines using Kubernetes. And there are two ways that they do this, that they manage their applications. One is with patterns. Generally, patterns are easy to use, and they are recommended for beginners. And in a pattern, you directly specify the services that you wish to run. But it's a less powerful or less flexible mechanism, and if your deployments are very large, it's not recommended to use patterns. Policies, on the other hand, you just declare your intent and then there's a constraint-based resolution used to determine uh, what, which, what, whether your policies will result in a deployment. So node policies are resolved against service policies and business policies in order to determine the deployment. So let's look at, in detail, each of these mechanisms. First of all, using patterns. An Open Horizon pattern is simply a named collection of services. You must specify the services you want to include, and then Open Horizon will add in their stated dependency services as well. And the command that you'll use to set up your pattern is HCN Exchange Pattern Publish. So you can use the CLI help to get some more information on that. Then you will register your nodes using the name that you gave to the pattern, and all of those services will be deployed. So HCN register minus minus pattern, and then the name of the pattern. You can define a unique configuration variable set for each node when you register them, or you can define them globally when you create the pattern. Note, only one pattern may ever be active on a single node. And here's an example pattern just to show you what I'm talking about. There's a name, uh, you give it any name you like, and then a label and description that you can uh, use to uh, reference this if you're a human the computer ignores them and then you can state whether it's public or not this is useful in a multi-tenancy environment to indicate whether people outside your own organization can use the pattern and then there's an array of services and each service is defined with a for tuple so organization uh, the name of the service or service url we call it and the architecture of the service, the hardware architecture of the service, and then a list of versions that it's applicable to. Now let's talk about policies. There are three flavors of policy. In order to use the policy mechanism, you must define a deployment policy, and this is sometimes also called a business policy, so those two terms are interchangeable. And the way that you define a, a deployment policy is with HCN exchange deployment add policy. and uh, you can use the online help to check out that. You can also use HCN Exchange Deployment New to create a template that uh, will show you what a typical deployment looks like. If you wish, you may also attach a service policy to the service that you're deploying. So every deployment policy has to specify the service that it deploys, a single service that it deploys. And then uh, that service policy, if it exists, will be automatically merged into any deployment policy that references this service. And to create your service policy, you use HCN Exchange Service Add Policy. Um, now you must also register your edge nodes using a node policy instead of using the pattern mechanism. So it's HCN Register minus minus policy and uh, names of your uh, you know, details about your policy. So here's what an example node or service policy would look like. They contain properties and constraints. And properties are just name value pairs, so uh, they're like variables. So the first one is named mystrvar, and it has the value mystrval. And the second one is called myintvar, and it has the value one, two, three. And so you can uh, when, when you define these properties, you can give them whatever names and whatever values you like. And then constraints are conditional expressions that refer to these variables. And so uh, in another policy somewhere, the sum var variable needs to be defined. 
and in order for this constraint to be satisfied, some var must be greater than or equal to 2,000. And in some other policy somewhere, other var must be defined, and it must have the value string value in order for this constraint to be resolved. Now let's look at an example deployment policy. So deployment policies contain properties and constraints as well. Um, so, you know, they are here and they also have label and description just uh, like text. But like a pattern, a deployment policy also contains a service. Now notice that it's a single service here. It's not services with an S and an array, but it's just a single service. Uh, section here. So if, when you looked at the pattern, it had services and it was an array. Here it is just a, a structure and it contains a four tuple that identifies a service. Um, and there's also a user input section at the bottom, but I won't go into detail about that. So how does the policy mechanism work? All policies consist of properties and constraints, as I mentioned before. Properties are name value pairs, constraints are conditional expressions. The deployment policy is first automatically merged with any service policy that may optionally be defined for its specified service. Agbots then propose that merged policy to the agents on your edge nodes. Each agent then evaluates this proposal against its own node policy. If the combined set of policy constraints resolve appropriately, then the agent will accept the proposal and the service deployment will proceed. How does constraint resolution happen? The policy constraints must always be conditional expressions in terms of properties. The properties referenced in the constraints must exist, either specified by another policy under evaluation or provided automatically by Open Horizon. Open Horizon provides a few um, uh, property definitions like uh, Open Horizon memory, Open Horizon CPUs, uh, etc., that give the attributes of the host where where the agent is running. Both the constraints of the node policy and the constraints of the merged deployment and service policy are evaluated by the agent using the available, available properties that it has uh, locally or that are specified in the properties in the policies that are under consideration. And there's a tool that uh, you can use to simulate what effect your policies will have in the field when deployed, and that's HCN deploy check, and you can check that the manual entry for that or the online help for that. Some complete examples. Um, many examples that use policy for deployment are provided in the Open Horizon examples repository. So I've got the hello world, the CPU to event streams, and the operator examples there that you can follow those links to take a look at. In addition to the Horizon support files in the Horizon directories of those examples, you should also check out the policy directories, at least in, in the first two of them. So in the policy directories of the first two examples, you'll see all three types of policy files. Um, and in the readme.md files that are at the top of the examples, they contain instructions for how to use these policy files. In the third example, the policy files are buried a little bit deeper. They're in the simple operator directory, in the deploy directory, and then in the horizon directory underneath all of that. So let's summarize what we've learned here. Patterns are simpler and self-contained. There's only one per node, and it's recommended for beginners. Policies are more powerful or more flexible, and they simplify very large deployments. And the number of deployment policies, any number, of deployment policies uh, may be active on any one node at a time. Both patterns and policies uh, can be updated through the Open Horizon Exchange to cause deployment changes across the entire fleet, and both mechanisms allow for global or node-specific configuration variables to be set. And both mechanisms can be used to control the file synchronizations using the model management service. For more information, you can follow any of those links that are shown on this slide. Just pause the video and take a look. And thanks for listening.